Uh, fantastic. So uh, my name is Ben Harvey. I work um, at NCAS down at the University of Reading. Um, you'd have seen from the from the schedule I wasn't scheduled to give this talk, so Reinhard Schiemann um, has, has produced this, uh, these slides, and I'm going to try my best to talk over them. Um, I'm getting my excuse in early because I'm not entirely coherent. Um, so uh, I'm going to just got a few slides on how we're using Jasmine um, for our climate modelling uh, within the Canary uh, Science Programme. Um, I should say thanks also to the Yenkas CMS team who contributed a lot to the work um, that's been discussed here. Okay, so I've got a couple of slides just saying what, what Canary is for those that haven't heard of it, and then I'll talk about a couple of the climate modelling activities that we're doing, um, which, which involve Jasmine. Um, so Canary is a, um, I don't know if I can point here, can I? No, it's not that. It's a NERC National Capability Multi Center Science Program, um, which, other than being a bit of a mouthful, it is a, it's a route by which um, NERC funds science within its research centers. Um, so it's a kind of fixed term thing. It's kind of like a project, but it's a, so it's a five year program. Um, we started in April 2022, so we're about a year and a half in. Um, the PI is uh, then Shafri and NCAS, but as you can tell from the multi center, in, in, in the title, they are, it's they kind of designed to facilitate collaboration between the NERC centres. So there's seven of the NERC centres involved in Canary, um, and there's several different multi-centre programmes. So Canary is just one of them, and you might hear about some of them. Um, so our interest is in climate change. Um, it's in high, high impact weather in the UK, um, and kind of general changes in the Arctic and North Atlantic region more generally. Um, so I've put some pictures here of kind of the sorts of things we're interested in. We're interested in extreme weather in the UK, in particular how they might, might change over the coming decades. Um, we've got a few kind of key target areas which are motivated by the UK government's climate change risk assessment process. Um, so we're thinking about inland flooding, we're thinking about uh, temperature extremes, um, droughts and water availability, um, we're talking about extreme winds and wind damage, um, and also changes in the UK shelf seas. Um, these are just some pictures here of some, some extreme events, which you may, may remember. Um, we put this together when we wrote the proposal a couple of years ago. Within the first year of the project, we can update all of these pictures with, with more recent extreme <laughs> events. So you, we saw Storm, Storm Eunice already yesterday in a picture. Um, you remember the extreme temperatures in summer 2022. Um, we broke 40 degrees in the UK for the first time. Um, so these are kind of events we're interested in thinking about. Thinking about. Um, you don't want to hear about the work package structure. I can imagine, but for just to kind of just to kind of frame what we're doing. So there is a science program. So we've got three science work packages which are listed in the middle here. There's four, three, and two. Um, we're kind of zooming out first in work package two, looking at the high impact weather and the impacts in the UK, including impact modeling of various kinds. Um, we're zooming out a bit to look at the wider North Atlantic region and the atmospheric and ocean circulation, represented there by the jet stream and these blue and red ocean currents. And then we're also looking in the rapid changes that we've seen in the Arctic and how these are influencing uh, the North Atlantic and the UK. So that's the science we're doing. That's all underpinned on the left by Work Package One, which is a suite of uh, community simulations, which are also running. Um, so the community simulations, in the sense that, that we run them and we use them for our science work packages, but they're also deliberately made available for wider use during and after the project. Um, so this is where Jasmine comes in. So I've, I've particularly making them available to the, to the wider kind of community. Um, there's a bunch of them there. There's five listed there, and there's a few other activities as well. Um, I'm just going to focus on two of them. So um, on the left, you can see well, the, well, so the blue ones are ocean modelling, which, which I don't know as much about. So I'm going to sit past these. We're doing very high resolution ocean modelling and also kind of water scale ocean modelling. Um, the two I'm going to focus on is the, the a peach colored one where it says N216 large ensemble. So, this is a climate model large ensemble that we're running. Um, and then the arrow down to the two kilometer uh, European model. So, this is a high resolution atmospheric model, convection resolving model uh, for Europe. Um, and this is how we're getting to our UK impacts. So, I'm going to go a couple of slides in each one and then kind of the workflow that we're using, which kind of incorporates Jasmine. So, just, just to say, I'll, I'll say this now and I'll say it again. So these are all produced on Archer 2, um, and then we move the data to Jasmine and move it to, to the elastic tape on Jasmine. Um, so we kind of view, view this as, from our point of view, as running these simulations, these are kind of single facility, which we kind of use at the same time, and our workflows use both of them at the same time. 
Um, so here's my slides on the on the large ensemble. Um, so Reinhard, who was going to give this talk, is, is kind of leading up this activity um, with these folks from CMS. Um, so we're running the, the Met Office uh, CMIP6 climate model. We're running it at um, N216 resolution. So this is around 60 kilometer in the atmosphere. Um, so this is what might be called a medium, uh, medium resolution. Climate model. It's not the highest resolution we have, but it's higher than much of the CMIP6. Um, so a large ensemble is when we take our climate model and we run our, our projection out to 2100, but we do it multiple times to capture the variability that the climate exhibits. And that's interesting for us, thinking about kind of near-term projections for the UK, to know what range of things we see. Um, so we're running on the following CMIP6 protocols. We're running from 1950 out to 2100. Um, we're following SSP370 uh, scenario, for those that know about these things. So it's a fairly high-end greenhouse gas emissions, but also high-end aerosol emissions. Um, so it's a large ensemble, so we run the model 40 times, so we end up with 4 times 150, which is 6,000 years of simulation, that's what we're targeting. Um, and there's a technical thing about there about how we initialize it, so we've got um, 8 macro initialized conditions, which is where we have kind of optimally, optimal spread of ocean initial conditions to capture variability in the ocean, and then we preserve each one of those 5 times in the atmosphere, and we end up with our 40 members. In terms of the, the kind of the suite design and the, the workflow, um, so it's a rather complicated diagram here. Just I'm just going to point out a couple of things. So the, the model with effectively is a blue box. Can okay, we run this in three month chunks after two? Um, so that's cycle T and then cycle T plus one is a three month chunk. Um, each of the gray boxes here is are things which we've added within Canary. So kind of the blue model is, is a CMIP6 model from the Met Office, and these are the kind of things we've added to the workflow for Canary. There's a few things here which I'll point out. So um, we've included XIOS um, within the model, so it's, it's producing CF compliant net CDF data kind of as the output. Um, we're doing some online analysis of storms, and this is for our downscaling to our two kilometer European model, which I'll talk about in a second. We're doing some post processing on, on Archer, so all of the top of this diagram is done on Archer 2. This arrow down here um, comes down to data transfer Jasmine, and then there's two things which are done on Jasmine. So we, We've got some uh, monitoring of the suite performance and, and uh, yeah, other different uh, suites are running. Um, and then we have some JDMA tasks, which, which move the data and the data. Um, so in terms of, of these two Jasmine tasks then, so one, one is monitoring the performance. So we have a, uh, kind of a, a yeah, the Jasmine web page where we where it's kind of automatically updates with the suite performance. So we have, um, 40 suites which we need to run. Um, currently 10 are completed, a third of 10 are running. Um, uh, and as the data arrives on Jasmine, this, this web page is being updated, which kind of informs us of how, how the progress is going and any problems are taken. Um, so there's a few numbers here, which maybe in the interest of time or go into too much detail, but just to say we kind of monitor uh, throughput on, on Archer. Um, this year goes from when we started in March this year up to nearly the present time, and then obviously Archer 2 downtime in, in the middle of this. Um, so when Archer 2 goes down, we, we can't run. Obviously, when Jasmine goes down, we have problems as well. So having kind of offset downtimes is slightly problematic. Um, yeah, so we're using the uh, Jasmine quick workspace, and then also we've got maybe we have about five petabytes and take at the end of the project from the to in terms of data access, so uh, the full output is being put onto tape, and then users will then uh, retrieve what they need from tape to do their analysis. Um, a data management tool is being developed based on JDMA uh, for this. Uh, for this, so find on and co at CMS are involved in this. Um, uh, in the meantime, so that we can start some initial kind of canary work uh, while that's still happening, some priority variables are being stored on the group workspace and kind of left there. And so some work can begin before we have the full data management tool in place. So that was all I was going to say on the large ensemble. I have to take questions afterwards. Um, uh, I've just got a couple of slides now on the, on the high resolution modeling we're doing. So the idea here is we, we have the, the global large ensemble model. Um, We'd like to do some high resolution modeling over the UK in particular um, to understand about the high impact uh, weather events. 
we can't downscale the whole 6,000 years. This isn't feasible. We just can't do it. So we've taken the approach of looking at the large ensemble as it runs and identifying when there's high impact events in the large ensemble. So as part of the workflow, we identify high impact storms in the large ensemble. We siphon off the data that we need to run a regional model. So this is boundary conditions and driving data. Um, and then we run the regional model at very high resolution just for the time period of these extreme events. That's the approach we take. It's slightly unusual, but I'll focus on high impact weather in the large ensemble. Um, and we're taking a, the Met Office pan European metric committee domain, which is illustrated here. Um, and we've got a workflow which does this, so it does the siphoning of the data on Archer as the large ensemble runs. Um, so it keeps behind what we need to run the regional model. Um, and then we run the regional model. So this is slightly further behind, so we're still setting this up. But uh, production on this is going to start hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, yeah, and then so so much like the large ensemble for the regional model, although it's a separate suite, it's got the same workflow. Um, we've got the same kind of additions to it. So we're using XIOS um, automatically transferring to Jasmine and taking it in May archives. Um, and we also have a, a web page monitoring the storms on Jasmine um, as they appear in the large ensemble. So you can see, see what's going on with our runs. So that's uh, my last slide. I'll just really point out my, my summary points. Um, so we're delivering a set of climate model simulations uh, for community use by the and wider science communities. There'll be 6,000 years of um, ADGEM at N216 resolution. Um, 1,000 years of already, already complete so, uh, since March this year. Uh, technically, this is enabled by Archer 2 and Jasmine uh, working together. Um, there's some numbers here. I'll, I'll Bremble was very keen that I make this point. So I'm going to say from, a, from kind of our perspective of running the models on, on Archer 2, Archer 2 and Jasmine are really much one facility which are working together to enable us to do this. Uh, the immediate next steps and challenges. So we're going to finish uh, the large ensemble production uh, by the end of next year. So that's the plan. Um, it's progressing well so far, so we're quite confident in this. Um, and then finalize the regional model design and testing um, for the extensions. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Um, we probably have time for like one or two questions. Um. So one of the things that really impresses me about Canary is the way that the modeling is really informed by the, what the community of Canary needs in terms of output. And, stuff. and I think it's a really, it's a model that we can all learn from when it comes to kind of planning how we um, produce data that is really useful um, downstream especially in the net zero context itself. It's, it's really great stuff. Yeah, so life. I guess, yeah, Weinhardt is spearheading this. So we, so we had a couple of online workshops before we started running the model where you very kind of shared the, the proposed stash, the proposed output um, that we're going to output um, and got feedback um, and went during meetings and also offline and email and things. Yeah, I think that's a really important step. Any last questions? The final question I have is Jasmine speaking a little bit more. From one of the previous talks, you heard that JDMA is going to be shut down on the tape. Um, what are the consequences of can I bring on the tape? That's a good, yes. So I don't know too much about this side of things. It'll be interesting to. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's not so much that we're going to leave a gap. Um, it's that. Um, yeah, so we, we won't leave a gap. It'll just be that um, the elastic tape slash JDMA holdings will be made accessible via the NLDS you know, system interface. Um, but I think we will wait to actually close down the. JDMA and the ET direct interfaces until that's fully completed. 
course, the whole time, time frame, I guess you mentioned six months or something. Yeah, probably too early to kind of guess, um, but yeah, I thought six months ish should be a good, good target. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, okay. So, does that, does that make sense? One more follow up question. Um, so, the data management that would be developed for JDMA uh, data access, will that also be seen in the full terms of the new system? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We probably need to look we, at we, that. Yeah, we're going to talk to you about it. So, so I don't much either yet. So it's Brian Lawrence is coming. I assume he knows that. Well, it's probably similar operations that are carried out. So it wouldn't be too much of a shift. But yeah, it might be some tweaking of commands too. At this stage, I guess it would be good just to check it's kind of feasible yeah. and, and straightforward. Yeah. Any questions about they might want to just um, if, if it was possible to move data to write data direct to NLDS from um, Archer 2, is that something that you would plan to use in the lifetime of this project, or has that sort of come too late to, to adapt to be able to do that? Oh, that's I have to ask at CMS, but I guess it's probably too late for this, this particular, uh, I'd imagine. Yeah. But, yeah, because we'll you're doing a separate transfer of. That yeah, it's using the X. Then it goes to tape, and then you pull back off tape the stuff that you want to process. That, that's the plan, yeah. 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 So, in theory, you just do that in one, in one step, the mm -hmm. data transfer and the writing stuff, just directly to Yeah, sure, yeah. That's sort of to the end of the last thing. Yeah. 